Hello, welcome back. August is the time of year when British students receive their exam results in the UK and marks the start of the competition for university places. And this week's newspapers are full of pictures of girls leaping with joy. This week's headlines contain some incredibly good news for male students. The boys, long since written off as second raters, are now outperforming the girls. In The Guardian, we read... Boys get more A-star A-grades than girls for the first time in the last seven years. The article goes on. In England, boys perform better in the changed A-level subjects when it comes to the top grades in those subjects. The results for girls declined significantly compared with previous years. And The Telegraph, not content to be outdone by The Guardian in reporting such upbeat news, reports... Boys beat girls to top grades for the first time in 17 years. The article goes on. Boys are beating girls to top A-level grades for the first time in 17 years, with 26.6% of boys achieving coveted A-star or A-grades compared to just 26.1% of girls. The dramatic reversal of fortunes is thought to be fueled by the new, tougher A-levels which have less coursework and no modules. Girls have outperformed boys every year since 2000. So this has to be good news for change, surely? Anyone who has watched my video series Moriarty and the Art of Political Science will be only too aware that for decades, boys have not been served well by an ideologically driven education system. But, I hear you say, at last, things seem to be improving. We have been reassured by the headlines. Unfortunately, as one has come to expect from the mainstream media, the headlines and articles are dishonest. You know what they say about lies, damn lies, and statistics. The skillful and dishonest have no problem presenting statistical data in a manner which suits their particular narrative. In this case, the journalists of both The Guardian and The Telegraph successfully misdirect the reader by simply ignoring absolute numbers and concentrating instead on the numbers of top grades as a percentage of those of the same sex taking A-levels. If you're not sure where the trick is, a simple extreme example shows what nonsense these statistics really are. What happens if we decide to ignore absolute numbers in an extreme case? Suppose a mere 10 boys took A-levels but all got A-grades, whilst 100 girls took A-levels and half got A's and the other half B's. The boys' success rate at the top grade would thus be 100%, but the girls a mere 50%. So the boys are doing twice as well. Obviously this must be related to the patriarchy, right? Do you see how the statistical sleight of hand works and how it favours a particular narrative? But surely, no top-notch publication like The Guardian, Telegraph, or even the BBC would try to pull such a dishonest statistical stunt. That, of course, was a rhetorical question, because if you subscribe to this channel, you already know the answer to that particular question. And they do it every single year. For example, in 2014, The Telegraph announced, and I quote, A-Levels 2014, gender gap between boys and girls closing, and they use the same statistical legimen. So clearly, if we need to understand what the reality is, we need to look at absolute numbers. This graph shows the number of people taking A-Levels from 1999 to 2016, broken down by sex. This graph represents the percentage excess of girls over boys based on the same data used in the previous graph. If you are more interested in the top grades, then for several years the number of girls awarded A-star A-grades has exceeded the number of boys by over 23,000, or 24% more girls. If we look at the A-star A-B grades, the excess of girls over boys was 60,500 in 2016, and it's unlikely to be much different this year, 2017. 
When it comes to entrance into better universities, it is that last figure which counts. In fact, UCAS data shows that nearly 100,000 more girls than boys have applied to higher education, about 372,000 girls and about 277,000 boys. So the excess of girls is even more emphatic at university entrance, 34%, than at A-level entrance, 24%. The recent trend for women to receive 35% more degrees per year than men is set to continue, and likely to increase. Any female supremacists can heave a sigh of relief. Girls are still trashing boys as much as ever. In fact, increasingly so, as the differentials are increasing. So the question is, why do news organisations like The Guardian, The Telegraph and the BBC give the opposite impression? Well, the only conclusion one could come to is that they don't want people to know the truth. They don't want parents worrying too much, especially the parents of sons. And the authors of these articles are quite prepared to throw the children of other people under the bus simply to maintain their own comfortable ideological bubble. We end our adventure at this point. I hope you found something of interest in this video. If you would like to support my channel, I now have a Patreon page. If you're unable to support my work through Patreon, then you can share, like or comment. It's all good. Thank you for watching.